Joining us now. Yep. Uh, and we've got a member of the uh, Judiciary Committee, uh, Senate Judiciary Committee, Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal of the great and chilly state of Connecticut. Uh, so, uh, Senator, um, I must say, uh, as somebody that's talked about the institutions holding themselves up very well uh, the first year, it seems that uh, the second year has started, unfortunately, with a series of, of troubling challenges. Perhaps they're just testing the water on uh, the, an independent Justice Department. Uh, you've got the president saying that he wants a Roy uh, Cohn in there. You have Republicans in the Senate actually finally uh, sending forth a, a, a criminal uh, recommendation um, and uh, referral. And it's for a guy who actually is reporting wrongdoing uh, of the White House. Well, where are we in the beginning days of 2018? Well, here's where we are in terms of upholding the rule of law. The special counsel is proceeding meticulously and methodically and he will interview the president face to face is my prediction remember that we've had two convictions two indictments the indictments will result in trials and those trials will be revelatory of additional facts as will the additional convictions and indictments that you can expect early this year from the special counsel that's part of upholding the rule of law i'm very so you're saying we, we should expect additional indictments uh, soon Almost certainly, in my view, there will be additional convictions. Convictions. Guilty pleas, okay. as well as indictments. But on the Judiciary Committee, I'm very disappointed that this first action by the Republican majority is aimed at someone who has reported wrongdoing, Christopher Steele, rather than mm. committed it. And it's based on information that the FBI and the Department of Justice actually provided to the committee. It's not new information generated by the committee. And so I think it seems more designed to deflect from the investigation that we should be conducting into collusion by the Trump campaign with Russian meddling and the obstruction of justice. Christopher Steele, who's referred for prosecution, actually blew the whistle on the Russians. He reported wrongdoing. And uh, he should be before the committee for an interview, perhaps. But I have read Simpson's interview with the committee and Donald Trump Jr.'s interview with the committee. And I can tell you that the really serious, profound, and pressing questions are raised by Donald Trump Jr.'s interviews. And I'm hoping that we will call him for a witness and that the committee will release Simpson's testimony. That's what we're yeah. calling on, for on, them to on, do today. On Donald Trump Jr., mm. uh, despite the apologies from Steve Bannon and Mike, I suspect there's a reason why Steve Bannon said Donald Trump Jr. will be cracked like an egg and a reason why people close to this investigation have for some time said, watch what happens to Don Jr. Well, it's inevitable that something was going to happen to Don Jr. As Senator Blumenthal just indicated, he will be called back to testify further. But that raises the question of the threat to the investigation to the special prosecutor himself, to that office. Where would you put the risk today of the president trying to dismiss Bob Mueller? In the same week, Mike, as the Wolf book came out, there was an extraordinary, excellent report from the New York Times about the president sending his White House counsel to stop Jeff Sessions from accusing himself is so that, that he could, that, in effect, that, stop the investigation. So that, I think there's a real Is that threat. obstruction? Does that play into a large, as a prosecutor, would you look at that and say, well, considering that he also lied about the Russian meeting on Air Force One, uh, considering that he also knew that his national security advisor had committed a crime against the FBI and then went to the FBI and tried to get a loyalty oath and then pressure them not to <laughs> investigate, to drop the investigation where they knew charges were coming. And then the president is now, uh, we're finding out, pressuring the White House counsel, who doesn't work for the president, he works for us, to go to the Attorney General of the United States and pressure him to not recuse himself. Is that obstruction of justice? You have just given in mini form part of a closing argument in an obstruction of justice. Case. How about the president himself admitting that he fired uh, Comey to that kill the investigation? That is very definitely evidence of pretty good evidence. corrupt intent, which is a key element of obstruction of justice. And uh, I think to answer 
Mike's very, very pertinent question. As this investigation comes closer to the Oval Office, as Donald Trump himself sees the vice tightening, the danger is greater than ever to we, we, we got to go to break, but I just got to ask you this question. Nixon was an unindicted co-conspirator, obviously. We have people that are going around every day saying, well, you can't indict the president of the United States. C can you? That's an open legal question. Exactly. It's not as closed as, as everybody claims, is it? You can indict. You, you can certainly indict a president. And then the Supreme Court can make the final decision, right? That is probably the way it would arise if there were an indictment of the president. But certainly there can be indictments of people around the president. And that's the most likely focus right now for Bob Mueller. And I think that the combination of evidence, some of it you've just recited, but the Air Force One statement and uh, the president's role in concocting an obviously false and misleading version of events that caused one of his legal spokesmen, Mike Mark Corral, to resign because he didn't want to be part of it, as well as the directing of his counsel. And you're absolutely right. He works for the presidency, right. for us, not for the president, uh. to stop Sessions from recusing himself. I think all of it is building mounting evidence, yeah. and there's now a credible case of obstruction of justice. And Senator, thank you. Open question thank you so much. We great, thank you. Great Senator thank Richard you. Blumenthal. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.